like dating back in, since I was in Little League, like I always threw well to you, right? Like I never had really, and I've had freaking yips and all that stuff throughout my career, right? But like every time I'd come home and I'd throw to you, it was just something about like, wow, it looks so easy to throw a strike, right? Add your attention. Give me my leader. Now listen to Clear the Mechanism. The Robbie Rose Show. The Robbie Rose Show. Yo, what up, dudes? Um, sorry if I sound like tired or whatever. I just uh, it's early in the morning. And I'm just putting this podcast together. Uh, the reason why I'm 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 getting uh, getting going early is because I totally forgot to do this yesterday. I, I had full plans of doing this as a podcast as well, but I released the full video of this particular segment um, yesterday, which can be found uh, therobbyroshow dot com slash catcher dash convos. Um, whatever platform you're listening to it on, you should be able to go in the show notes and just click the link. But, uh, yeah, so it's taken so long to be able to do this, but my dad finally agreed on doing a segment. Uh, he doesn't like to be filmed. He doesn't really like to talk, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so <clears throat> we, uh, we finally, we finally did a little segment. It's basically like there wasn't really a, a set plan to attack as far as what we were going to be, um, t- tackling with talking points we were just like hey let's talk dude so we have really good conversations and we've had really good conversations as a as i grew up right like i i'm i was extremely i am extremely blessed to to have a father that that played in the big leagues and uh you know, 10 professional baseball seasons. So I want to take advantage of the media connectivity that we have. And I kind of wanted to bring, you know, a typical conversation uh, to you guys. So what we do is, is we just, we throw on the, uh, the camera, throw on the mics and we just talk pitcher catcher dynamic. We talk a lot about, you know, developing a relationship, earning respect, doing little things, uh, what I like in a catcher, what my dad kind of likes in a pitcher, and uh, it gets really, really good, like, towards the end. I think when we both kind of, like, warm up and start seeing a direction that we wanted to take it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Like I said, if you want to watch the video, uh, there's a video, about 17-minute video, that, um, that will be found in, in the show notes. So if you want to go whatever, like I said, whatever app that you listen to the podcast on, if you're an Apple guy or if you're a Spotify or iHeart, whatever, it's uh, the link should be clickable in, in your guys's uh, details of the show. So be sure to go check that out. Uh, I, I want to let you guys know for the next week or so, I'm running a 20% discount on my website due to the coronavirus. I know a lot of people are inside and are, are grinding and, and they want to they want to find ways to get better. So I'm offering a 20% discount on essentially everything on my website besides the one-on-one coaching. So mechanical analysis, eBooks, all that stuff, 20% off. Enter code Corona20 at checkout to, to get that. That'll be lasting, I think, until April 1st. Um, you know, the velocity development ebook, I've been getting a lot of questions regarding that. And, uh, it's, it's, um, the biggest thing for me when I was, when I was creating that was simply to answer the question of how do you throw hard? And it took me a 30 plus page ebook to do that. So everything that I, I have in there that I've utilized throughout my career that I've, I've taught or I've been taught, um, that have, has worked for me, that has worked for other of my clients all in, all in one ebook. So, um, the biggest goal again, like I was trying to just give you guys the tools and the information and the insight on how to best go about it yourself. So the, the velocity development ebook is a, is a, it's, it's a great, you know, thing to have, especially right now at 20% off during the times of not playing due to this Corona thing. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I want to get you guys into this segment. It's really, really cool. For those of you guys who do not know, uh, my dad was uh, very fortunate enough. He was drafted 17th round. He's got an unreal story. Like, he came out of high school, went and played football. Like, it's uh, we got to sit down and talk um, about his journey on a podcast pretty soon. But um, if you head to the, uh, the, the full article that I did, the full, the full breakdown on, the, uh, on my website, you'll see a little some more information on him. Uh, I think I linked to like his baseball reference page. And then I'll also include a ton of videos 
of him catching me in the last few months. But I also want to include, I'll probably do that after I create this podcast. I want to include some videos of like dating back to old school Rob and having pops catch me. But yeah, so really cool, uh, really cool segment. Probably the coolest one I've done with, with dad obviously hits home. So hope you guys enjoy. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. All right, guys, pitcher catcher dynamic with my old man. All right, we got to do our segment. I don't know what that means. Well, I'll just ask you a question then. I'll, t- I'll, go- I'll talk first because I like talking about this. So in regards to what I like from a catcher, I'm a big affirmations guy, right? Big word. I'm Is that three syllables? I'm struggling with that word right there. <laughs> affirmations in the sense of like, if I make a good pitch, I want to see like a oh boy, you know, let's go. Because that's something you've always done. Okay, you make a good pitch, you get that. You get that. I'm also a fan of this, and I hate to be that guy, but I need it sometimes. When I make, like, an OO fastball right down the middle that doesn't need to be, like, framed or anything. But the catcher still goes out of his way and, like, sticks it, you know. For For some reason, I, like, I do not like when there's that, like, oh, it's down the middle, like, boom, boom, boom. And I know that's pretty, like, Little League of me. You like it? I, I No, I don't like when there's just like, oh, yeah, it's a strike, so I don't need to, like, work hard to oh, get you the wanna, strike. You want to have frame every time. I want, yeah. So like, Everybody just framing everything. Yeah. Okay. I just, I really like when... Catchers when, nowadays are under that influence. Well, I think there's a difference between a guy that's like a seasoned vet big leaguer, right? No. Why should there be? He came from the same background. Anyways, I think it just goes back to me identifying that I, enjoy, I I do well with affirmation. It makes me feel good. Even in bullpens, like, because bullpens are the time where catchers are like, I'm hungover, like, I don't want to freaking be here, you know? Like, are they? I'm not playing today. And there's... But the guys that, like, freaking really get after it, dude, and they're like, oh, boom. I'm like, let's let's go, right? I can't speak for the guys that are lazy. Because there's no business in the game to be lazy. I'm sorry. So you're telling me even when you were in the big leagues. I and, catch bullpen there all the but same. I'm, but I'm saying if you had a guy that like you knew it was a strike, are you still like. I'm still catching a strike. Framing it. Right. But yeah. are you like working hard to get it? Oh, yeah. Now what is. Okay, you so don't the, have to work very hard to catch a strike. It's already a strike. Right, but not not there's a difference between catch and like stick. Right? I think that's the right wordage I would use. Because catch you can like obviously you can catch it and then just funnel it to your chest and throw it back. But like sticking it is like boom, it was right there. Let me hold it 0.9 seconds. Alright, here you go. Right? That's the thing is that you're talking to me about catchers today, and I'm I'm out of the game 25 years. Right? Yeah, it's definitely changed. It is a totally different game than what I'm used to. I see it all the time. I see catchers going to a knee, and the only reason our catchers went to a knee was to get low, right, back in the day. Tony Pena would get to one knee, and he'd do the splits because he wanted to get the pitcher down. He wanted to get everything down. Yeah. Right? That was the reason. Yeah. Nowadays, I think it's just because... Just common. Guys are lazy. Somebody, Somebody brought it up. Because he had to catch 13 innings one night. <laughs> and so he said, screw it, I'm going to a knee. And it caught on. Sorry, guys, got to interrupt this podcast to bring you guys a advertisement from somebody random. Because everybody wants to catch well, I think Well, I think they also evolved to the point where, like, where when you were playing, I bet no one wanted to go to a knee because of the dirt ball. You wouldn't know, like, how to react, and you would be worried of a pass ball or a wild pitch, right? Mm-hmm. But I think nowadays we've... Catchers have, like, adapted to even go, like, from a knee. I, I was watching Sanchez catch the other night. Gary? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, the guy on second base. Oh, and yeah. Sanchez is not a very good defensive catcher. Mm. I like throwing to him, though. But still, he's not a very good defensive catcher. He doesn't block balls. No, I mean, he's historically known for... He doesn't block balls. So, if I'm him, I'm going back to the textbook way... Of blocking balls. I'm mm-hmm. getting up on my haunches. I'm getting ready. Yeah, see, I don't like haunches, though. 
Because well, that's a whole like different conversation. Because I don't mean haunches. I mean like a spider getting ready to take a bite of something. Yeah, like okay. almost expecting a dirt ball, mm-hmm. right? But I will say that as a pitcher, I think it's it's extremely crucial for for catchers to understand that they could tip pitches because I've had guys, especially at the lower levels, who would catch me, and like every time it was a breaking ball, like how we just said, expect breaking ball. Every time it was a breaking ball, it was this, right? So it's easy to get down and block it. But then every time it was a fastball, it was like... Well, that's their fault. Well, and it's somebody else's fault for not mentioning it to them because they forget. Sure. They're just going instinctively. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's throwing a fastball. Most of the time he gets them right there. I don't need to freaking get up. Another thing with the knee dynamic, though, is like why I think why a lot of people are starting to do this is because we're almost... Or, or catchers, I think, are taught, and I could be wrong, catchers are taught to funnel from down to up, right? So the, I think the lower that we could get with our hand, the more momentum that they have coming up. Whereas, like, if you were here, it's almost forced to do that, you know what I mean? Whereas if you get, like, automatically lower, you have an easier funnel. You know, there's catchers back in my day. Where they used to crouch, normally crouch, and their butt would be sitting on the ground. Sure. They, they could get just as low. Well, Richie was like that. Yeah, so was I when I was limber enough. Yeah. So don't tell me that. That ain't going to flow, flow with me. Well, I, I, think, I think there's a difference, though, like a general difference in being on two feet, right? Because I can get super low as well. But when you're kneeing like this... The way that you you move is, I think, a lot more smoother. See how you're turned there? I know I'm turned. Yeah. But what does turned have to do with it? Turn has to do with this pitch. What if you get this pitch? Well, that pitch is a missed pitch, and it's a ball. What if it's on the freaking black? Well, then you just you pull do it in. Do you? When your body's turned the wrong way? I mean, you, you still, still catch it. You always want to be in a position to catch anything. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. You put your square body to it. You don't turn to the side. Come on. We know we know catchers. We want a good target, you know. We want to be squared up and be able to funnel anything wherever it is. Well, I think that's a pitcher preference thing, right? Because I'm I'm this way too, and that's what another topic I was going to talk about was like I I understand the target being a glove and I understand like okay, we want to throw to a glove, but I do really well with big guys because of like the general size of everything this way, like their body, you know. Sure. Because it's like, yeah, we can sit there and say, okay, set sights on the mitt, but it's the subconscious thought sure. of like having that big frame, right? I can throw it to pieces. Because if we, if you think about it, like dating back in, since I was in Little League, like I always threw well to you, right? Like I never had really, and I've had freaking yips and all that stuff throughout my career, right? But like every time I'd come home and I'd throw to you, it was just something about like, wow, it looks so easy to throw a strike, right? And then the flip side is like you get those small guys, and I understand, right? It's not their fault, but they get that. Even if they give a huge target, just the way that their body size is and the way they can like get super like compacted, I'm looking at it as a pitcher. I'm like, dude, that's it's like a tunnel. That yeah, like it's that's smaller gonna. Than smaller. <laughs> I don't know why. And it's not. I don't even know if it's like on the front of my my mind of of looking at it like that and perceiving it like that, but it's the subconscious thought and the comfort factor from us, right? Like, wow. It's the same thing when we long toss, I think. Like, you know, there's there's room for air. Like, you don't have to put it right into a specific strike zone when you're doing that. That's why that you have more freedom when you're throwing compared to, like, when you're at, you know, 60 feet, 6 inches, there's obviously a little bit more restrictions from the subconscious thought into a little, like, box you got to throw it into right and then that's what causes a little bit of physical restriction and so on and so forth i think that's the same thing from the mental side for a pitcher is like when you see that big target it's like oh it looks like it's an easy way to throw a strike today yeah i think for the most part even this conversation happens to be bringing everything into you know the whole realm of baseball being digested way too much hey you catch the ball you throw the ball you hit the ball these are the things that we do Mm -hmm. umpires believe it or not 
will have their mind made up whether it's a ball or a strike before the catcher catches the ball. Maybe the really, really no, good no. ones. No, no, they They do. I guarantee you because I've talked to them before. I've asked them point blank. Does it matter what I make it look like? No. Only if Cal Ripken's up there. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I then the question, though, is, is like, what what can you do as a catcher that's going to be that's going to allow the pitcher to be at his best. You know what I mean? Cause there's like, again, I, I, I talked about it in the beginning where I like when catchers stick it, you know? And then when you hear that from the umpire, you're not doing it for the call. You're almost doing it for like my external confidence. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, okay, well, Hey, good. Pitch. Yeah. Like I know, I know this guy, you know, wants that. So I think again, I think the, you know the the biggest question is is identifying the pitcher, and what's because knowing I, knowing that his his likes and dislikes. At the end of the day, you're working for us, and basically you are, and yeah. you want the best product out there. In order to give that, you have to fall within his guidelines. Well, that's yeah, I but mean, at the same time, you have to respect him too. The umpire? No, no, the catcher. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Cause like as, he puts as, down a one and you shake him, and he puts down a one again. There's a reason for that. That you can't catch an off-speed pitch. <laughs> now see why would you go there? I don't know. Because the hitter may be thinking off-speed. I just I just really appreciate a catcher showing me that he's working hard for me. Sure. You know what I mean? As hard as you're working. Like there's something about that that I'm like I'm all for. I've had some guys that. Obviously, I'm, I'm struggling, right? Like, my neck hurts, dude. Like, second and third, I've been freaking looking at balls in the gap the whole game. And then that, that breeds over into the catcher being dissatisfied. And then, like, you know, being a little lazy on the borderline stuff, you know. and A pitch you really need. Even, yeah, even the ones that, like, I, I partially execute. But it's a ball. Like, I want those to be, like, boom. Like, give me that, you know. But if You know just, what that does? What that does is it just makes everybody in the ballpark think it's a strike. Sure. And the umpire knows it's a ball. Sure. But yet the umpire is so sure. pissed because this catcher has spent his time trying to make that a strike. But then I can make the argument for the catcher's responsibility saying to freaking Joe back there saying like, hey, man, like I'm going to stick some balls that are, that are balls, but I'm doing it for my pitcher. I'm not showing you up. You know what I mean? Most umpires will say, no, you are showing me. No, because I think that conversation, I think umpires are civil, and I think that's something that a lot of people misinterpret. That's why I'm telling you that the ball is a strike or a ball before the catcher catches it. And then and then the conversation comes, what is it going to, what do you got to do to make sure that the pitcher is his most comfortable? Because pitchers pitch better when they're comfortable. Right. So I think that's that's the overarching barrier or the the point, right? And that's a pitcher's responsibility too. It's like you got to know what you like and what you don't like. Well, you got to treat the catcher too with, like I said, you got to give him some quality ups sure. once in a while. You got to you got to keep his sugar up. Well, we're <laughs> he's got diabetic. <laughs> he needs some stuff. But you know? were you, but were you a guy that needed like not needed affirmation, no. but it always feels good. No, it always feels good. It so, makes you go that extra mile. So that's what I'm going to do as a pitcher, right? So if like I throw an O2 banger in the dirt and you smother it, like I'm getting the ball back and I'm like, hey, nice work, yeah, dude. Yeah, big time. Because I think that spreads his wanting to do it for me. Do it again. I mean, have you caught pitchers that are just douchers? Yeah, I have. And it's not fun to catch. It's not. Right. And you don't put your full game into it yeah you know even if it's like a subconscious thing right like you're not not meaning to really because obviously no one means to do that yeah. but you know but, i had a guy who let's let's try not to drop names here but he was a left-hander pitched for boston late in his career had a lot of success early all-star left-handed pitcher could put the ball wherever he wanted to not overpowering just control off speed Big Bender had all four pitches. Good changeup, fader, mm -hmm. you know. And he was that guy. He was you, what guy? You block a ball, a curve ball in the dirt, O2. That's obviously a ball, and the and the hitter's not going to swing. Yeah. But you're working. But like no one on base, so he could have easily backhanded it. Yeah. Yeah. He'd come right up to you, man, and he'd pat you on the ass. He wouldn't want the ball back on the mound. Yeah. He would come up to the dish. Yeah. And you know, hit you. 
and then you want to catch that guy. Oh. Like even on his side days, you're like, hey, I'll catch him, even though I'm in the lineup tonight. Yeah, like I'll exactly. catch him. Exactly. And I think that just goes like goes hand in hand with being just like a good teammate and yeah. and being liked. And I think we've gotten away from that. Sure. I think well, game the game has gotten individualized. That is also I think on organizations' faults. Because organizations, rather they, whether they say it or not, they put us in this environment where it's like, get yours, dude. You know what I mean? Like the Homer. Whatever. Well, no, like whatever you got to do to like be at your best. Individually, the best. It's it's selfish baseball. Because you're getting paid yeah. this amount of money, and I'm paying you. Well, even in the minor leagues, right? Like, well, there's no team camaraderie. There's no being like, yeah, we can talk about being a good teammate, but it's like you're trying to advance levels, dude. Like, no one's not necessarily, like, spending extra time to be liked. And I think that kind of breeds into them, their performance in a game where it's like the guy spikes a one-two slider after back-to-back doubles. The last thing he's thinking about is, like, oh, nice job, dude. Like, it's almost, give me the freaking ball back, you know? I got to throw another one. I'm trying to get out of this league, right? But I think that that goes beyond just overall, like, performance. I think as a catcher you got to be willing to do these things without that because it's your job. Well, same thing for pitchers, right? Yeah, you got to be able to do these things without. But when it does happen, it, the individual compliments the catcher. It brings everything up yeah. a level. Yeah. And when that, when that all comes up a level, the game's played a lot better. Well, I, I think it's like the respect factor too, right? Because you see it with your fielders, exactly. right? Like a guy makes a freaking play, I'm exactly. turning around being like, yo, steak dinner tonight on me. Or flip side, he makes an E six, and we'll I'm like, next time, I'm getting man. the ball back. Hey, I'm getting you another one. Let's go. And I think yeah. that's we talk about how important confidence is, sure. at how hard this game is. Oh yeah, you need all the confidence you can get, and that could be instilled like externally from your teammates. Sure, you know, like the little things as far as you know, getting with your catcher and being like, hey, you know, I, I like this and that and this, and then him catching a good game from you and being like. Hey, here's a twenty-five dollar Applebee's gift card, man. Like you worked your tail off. Like, and you don't even have to do that. You don't have to do that. You, you don't have just, to do anything. You can just compliment. But him. I yeah. think the misconception is like, yeah, that benefits him as a catcher, but that's going to benefit me because now he's more inclined to do more work for me and, and want to catch you. Yeah, and then that news gets passed along because I was a guy that at the end of the year I would always hand gift cards out, and that gets passed along, right? Like catcher to catcher you know how much time y'all catchers spend together so it's like oh i really like catching him even though he had a freaking eight last year and he got, got his yeah. tits lit yeah. he's still fun to catch yeah. and it's, it, it couldn't even be he could say i'm fun to catch even though i spike balls in bullpens like i don't know where it's going sometimes but the fact that he remembers the gift card oh yeah is like oh dude he's fun to catch yeah you know what i mean big time yeah are we gonna throw today or? i don't know what you're doing man you just your lips start moving and you can't stop I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, that was fun. That was fun to record. But like I said, head over to the com slash catcher dash convos, C O N V O S, and you'll see the full video along with a bunch of other videos of my dad and I throughout the years. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Um, stay tuned, stay locked in. I'll be releasing a lot of podcasts and more content throughout the uh, these months of lockdown provide you guys some entertainment hopefully got a lot of stool whoa a lot of stool a lot of cool stuff coming your guys' way so um, hopefully you're registered as a member of the robbie Rowe show if not head to the show notes and do so love you guys god bless enjoy the day